I'm here with Ankit Vadwa. And uh, Ankit, right at the beginning, what I really want to ask you is you've partnered with an astounding number of cricketers all over the world regarding their NFTs and a lot of cricket leagues. I was looking at all the names and clearly it wasn't possible for me to memorize all of them. So how exactly, you know, did you get into this business with the belief in the beginning? Uh, because at that time, you know, NFTs, Metaverse, even right now is quite a new concept. So most people don't know about it. So how did you feel that, you know, you want to invest in it and get involved in it in such a heavy? Um, I mean, first of all, cricket is a large sport. There are more than a billion plus fans, actually more than 1.5 billion fans globally. In fact, it is large enough that it is the second biggest sport in the world. It has the second highest followership. Uh, in the entire world after football. And sometimes you don't realize how big uh, the fandom for the sport is. Right. But where cricket has sort of lagged behind a little bit is, uh, is in fan engagement. Yeah, Our engagement is largely limited to what you see on the television, uh, a brief bit of engagement when matches happen. And I think we've seen some evolution on that with a lot of digital plays in cricket coming up, especially mm -hmm. around fantasy, etc. Uh, so, so it has moved further, but if you compare fan engagement with many of the top sports in the world, um, I mean, I think cricket has its way to go. Um, so, so that is what actually propelled us in this direction. Uh, we see about 30% of any major sports revenue coming from aspects outside of marketing and uh, media. Yeah, so, uh, so memorabilia. Um, you know, jerseys, collectibles are very, very, a very, very big part of any sports fans persona and therefore also a very big part of any sports uh, overall revenue streams. We haven't seen that in cricket as yet. And that's where uh, radio comes in. That's what gives us the belief that that, like a lot of things that have happened in uh, the South Asian part of the world, uh, you know, have been digital first. So we sort of leapfrog the physical businesses and move straight away into the digital sphere. Um, our conviction is also that given all the strong inputs, given the numbers that we just talked about, collectibles are just a matter of time and they're bound to happen. And digital is where the leapfrog will take us, given uh, you know, how other digital technologies have also matured in, in the target uh, users and customers. Right, right. Okay. And I mean, like you, like you said, the whole digital thing, I mean, right now with your background, it looks like I'm speaking to someone right out of the metaverse, but moving on. Now, you've raised $120 million led by Dream Capital, right? I don't even know how many zeros there are over there. How exactly did this come about? Seven. Okay, I'll, I'll try to remember <laughs> that. No, I know. The, so, look, um, um, this is clearly an exciting space. And therefore, um, and, 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 and the progress that we've made uh, in terms of the signups as well, uh, in terms of taking a first uh, mover advantage in a space which is, uh, you know, where where we sort of a year, year and a half ago when we started out, uh, we went in before a lot of people uh, even knew what NFT stood for. So that has that has come to our advantage to an extent. Uh, but I think what, what has also happened is in, uh, over time, funds and investors have realized the potential of the space. Um, the... Uh, I would say we've always uh, therefore had the ability to fundraise, um, you know, with more suitors than, uh, um, than the money we've needed. Um, and, and therefore, uh, the beauty of that is then you make the right choices, right? With Dream Capital, um, we, it is not just a financial investment. This also adds a lot of strategic value. And with 140 million plus sports fan users, uh, that belong to their ecosystem. I mean, you can put two and two together. We've got something on the NFT side, which is leapfrogging what has not happened in the physical world. And you have a set of users, the largest set of users uh, in sport, ready to take that on. And that combination is uh, that combination is what makes this investment very exciting for us. Right, right. Okay. Now, one thing, you know, since you're really the expert in this matter, there are a lot of people who are just getting to know about NFTs and the metaverse, literally what NFT stands for, right? And then they start reading about uh, news on the internet about it. And there's, there's one news, which I just literally two, three hours back, there was an update about it. And it's, it's been there uh, for the last three, four weeks regarding this 
first tweet of Jack Dorsey, which was bought for two point nine million dollars uh, by somebody uh, as an NFT, and then uh, it was uh, the value of it right now is only fourteen thousand dollars. So somebody who's getting worried about this or confused about this whole uh, issue, what exactly would you would you say to them? How would you explain the situation to them? I mean, first of all, uh, what I would say is NFTs are not. Uh... I think it is unfair to look at NFTs as trading assets, uh, or at least put the primary lens on, on NFTs as a trading asset. Hmm. What we are talking about here is fandom. Hmm. Yeah? And uh, I mean, if I told you that, uh, well, very soon you will probably see in one of the iterations here, a Zahir Khan photo and a Virinda Sevag photo. Right. Virinda Sevag on uh, Twitter has, uh, you know, more than two crore followers. Uh, you add all his social media and physical followership together. And, you know, the, you can only imagine the scale of, of fandom there. And if Virinda Sevag is coming out with 50 um, copies of an NFT where he talks about, let's say, um, you know, his Multan innings. Yeah. And only 50 of those fans, only 50 of those fans could uh, get their hands on this and truly claim this as an asset that they own. Uh, which represents their fandom. I mean, uh, then it's not a question of, uh, you know, the trading dynamics, the way people look at it, it's a question of fandom, collection, and other utilities. And that is the second part that we will touch upon as we talk further. I mean, I think there's one aspect of collectible, which is very exciting on NFTs, uh, which is sort of where the market has evolved first, which is also what we, uh, you know, started doing first, uh, where you can, connect with the sport, with your heroes, you know, by being a part of their collectible ecosystem. Yeah. But very soon you will also see these assets can be utilized in ecosystem apps and games. So if you own a card of Virinda Sevag, an NFT card of Virinda Sevag, you could bring him into your team, which goes into an app or a game where you are competing, let's say with me. So your 11 player team and my 11 player team uh, would be playing virtual tournaments um, so, so everything that you've seen that, uh, you know, that has happened in the physical world is very much feasible and possible for cricket, cricket fans like us now in the virtual world. So right. when you start looking at these aspects, then the discussion is not so much about X million versus Y thousands. Right. It's more about, you know, how do I take my fandom and, you know, really add another flavor or a dimension to it, uh, which is beyond the limited options I've had so far. Right. So basically, an important point which you raise, looking at it from a from a pro proper lens or a different perspective, either you can look at it from the trading lens or like you've said, look at it from the whole fandom perspective, which you've just explained. Now, moving on, you know, if you, from whatever you've told me and from whatever I've seen of uh, Rario online, would you say, would I be correct in saying that Rario is literally giving a new dimension to cricket fandom, just like uh, the cricket trump cards, the WWF trump cards uh, gave to kids in the 90s? I mean, I think that's a very good way of putting it um, because, you know, when we were younger as well, uh, we would, um, uh, you know, we, we, we would collect what center fresh wrappers to exchange it for uh, trump cards that you would get, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, and then, then, then probably take it to school. Maybe some people took it to college as well. I don't know, but mm. take it to school and then compare with your other friends on what you got versus what I got. So yes, the excitement um, is not very different from what you mentioned. I think um, it only adds, uh, you know, the entire aspect of digital to what we may have seen in our childhood. And it takes, that actually takes it further by several orders of magnitude in terms of what you could do with it. I mean, you could create different varieties of games. It's not just trump cards, right? Mm. Uh, you could have virtual simulations. You could have, yeah. uh, you know, various forms of engagement. And you will see that coming soon on the, uh, you know, on the radio uh, ecosystem where these NFTs are A, great collectibles, but B, fantastic utility items which connect you with the sport as well. So bring, you know, you would, you would end up using a lot of your fandom-based knowledge in collecting the right cards because those cards and NFTs, you know, uh, would enable you to participate in different games and apps. And that's not all. I mean, it also adds a dimension of uh, physical world privilege, which we'll also talk about, uh, and you will see more of that uh, with radio. Okay, okay. Now my last question, to a person who doesn't understand cricket NFTs, but as a cricket fan, how would you explain the whole concept of Rario and NFTs and Metaverse and digital collectibles in 60 seconds? 
I mean, if you are a fan um, of the sport, if you are a fan, um, you know, of any of the players, as I mentioned, uh, who are in the video behind me, and if those players had only a limited uh, memento that came out, the question is, as a fan, how how excited would you be to get your hands on it? What being an NFT enables is it gives you ownership in the digital space, which was not possible in the same way before. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you ownership of a scarce asset. Yeah. And beyond that, I mean, if you look at the privileges that come with this, whether that's participating in games in the online domain, or they are privileges like meeting your superheroes, enabled by the fact that you own certain NFTs that belong to them, you know, or go a step further, maybe you could bowl to Virender Sehwag or any of the other players there, or maybe you could face a ball by Zahir Khan. I mean, those are things that typically money can't buy. And for a fan, mm -hmm. that is ex valuable and exciting, right? And that's what radio enables. Now, everything that I've said is irrespective of, I mean, I did not particularly use the word NFT. It's yeah. about how you as a fan yeah. would enjoy the engagement. And I think that's a very important dimension for all of us to understand that this is about fandom. Uh, this is, uh, you know, NFTs are digital goods. There are different ways in which you can build digital goods. Here we are building digital goods around cricket, which mm. are exciting for our fans and super fans in the sport. Right. So very, very well put by you. Uh, clearly, a lot of exciting times ahead for all the cricket fans out there. Thank you so much for talking to us and uh, all the best for the future. Thank you, Kapil. Thank you.